whatever you want to do whatever you want to I will make room for you
pray the religion go and we just break that. Lord, that you take the traditions that we go by, that are man-made, God, you just snap those in half. God, I pray that you just get people out of their comfort zone. That's how we grow. Right. I just pray for the real, the real Jesus in this room, God. The one who loves his neighbors. The one who learns how to forgive. I just pray for that Jesus, God, in every single person's heart. God, the one that puts themselves aside and understands that that's the dreams and aspirations you have are, are great. But at the end of the day, it's still not about you. And your life might not be going the way that, it's, that you want it to go because it's not about you. He loves you, but there's a bigger, there's a bigger picture here. Everybody doing though? Yeah. Monday, yeah. right? Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Um, I guess we'll uh, get ready to start. Um, I'm gonna give y'all a little intro on what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, it's been on my heart probably this last week, and um, it's worship, right? Worship. Um, I think a lot of times, you know, we think about worship. Um, we think about, you know, everything we do. Like, what is worshiping God? Way we live our lives. Um, every day. Um, just what we do and what take place. Honoring him. Absolutely. Just 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 being consumed with God, right? Being consumed with God. And um I think, you know, a lot of times you'll see in scripture, um, the reason why we're set free and we brought out of bondage is the worship. Um when Moses and you know Aaron first went to Pharaoh. You know, and spoke the word of the Lord, it was, hey, <laughs> let my people go that they may worship me or serve me. Right. You know, so it's all, that's what it's all about. I think, you know, sometimes we'll forget that we've been set free to worship, <laughs> right? Um, we're going to open up in John chapter 8. We'll go to verse, I think it's 36. And um, what's amazing about it, too, is just even this whole place of worship. Um, he's worthy of it. Right, he worthy of all our worship, man. Um, I was just thinking about just 
the things of God and just how perfectly everything is put together. Like when you really think about just the universe and just how, how literally everything is held by him. That's what the scripture talk about. Everything is held together by his word. Um, water wouldn't be water if it wasn't for him, right? And we just, I'm talking about, if you really just think about how awesome God is, man. You, um, and I know we've not heard before as far as the distance with the sun and all that. But literally, think about it. Everything is perfectly in line and perfectly in tune. Perfect. Perfectly in line and perfectly in tune. Not just real good, right? But perfectly in line, meaning that if one thing was off with water, it wouldn't be water. You're talking about if one thing was off with water, it wouldn't be water. Probably kill us, <laughs> right? Um, with the way the universe and everything is put in place with oxygen and all that, and I ain't no scientist, right? But we know that if things were just a little off, we'd be in bad shape. And it just show you the love of God and how much he cared for us and how, how much purpose is behind us for him to even go that far to set up something that wonderful and that good for us, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it's just, it's, I think, even just thinking about that, it deserved worship. You know what I'm saying? Like, really just thinking about that, that deserved worship. Um, just how our bodies is made. You know what I'm saying? Hurting certain things take place and certain things go on. And I mean, it's amazing, man. It's amazing. It's amazing. But um, going back to just the whole, you know, the whole thing with worship of being set free. Um, let's read the scripture first. Uh, John chapter eight. We'll start at we'll start at thirty one and go to thirty six. It said, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, live in the word, dwell in the word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So what makes us free? The truth, right? And knowing, knowing the truth, right? The Bible talks about to know him, that is eternal life, knowing him, right? They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants that have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you would be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. He the one that set us free, right? And um, I think we really have to renew our minds knowing that we can really be free from all things, <laughs> like literally all things. That's why he set us free. Um, because when something has us in bondage, we're not free to worship how we really call to worship. We're not really caught. We're, we're not, we can't really serve, right, the way we've been called to serve if certain things might have a hold on us. And it's amazing just with the freedom I was thinking about. And I ain't no history, history guy, but I'm going to give y'all a little history. <laughs> Right. Um, this week, June nineteenth is Juneteenth. Right. And um, what's 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 really amazing about that day is, and they said they don't know the exact day, but um, they said by eighteen sixty three, the Emancipation Proclamation came forth as far as with slavery, letting everybody know, hey, slavery, it's, it's we done with it. Right. Um, well, in the state of Texas, they they weren't with it. <laughs> right. So they basically said and acted like nothing changed. So you literally had a group of people still in slavery, right? Until 1865. And then that's when you see the military come in and set the people free. But at the same time, they was free, but didn't necessarily know they was free. And a lot of times I think it's like that with us. We've been set free, but the enemy will want to hold us and won't want to let us go. But thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the grace of God. Thank God for the power of God. Because who the Son has set free is what? Free indeed. Free indeed. Because it's total freedom in him. Right? It's total freedom in him. Um, let's go to Colossians real quick, chapter 1. <laughs> just looking at really, too, just how he, how he, how he does hold all, all this stuff together. You know what I'm saying? And, um. Worshiping God is 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 
praising his name throughout the day. Just walking and abiding in that place with him. You know, and um, just because you can't sing, <laughs> right, don't mean you can't worship the Lord. You might not feel like you're the best prayer, you know, prayer guy. Somebody ask you, but guess what? The worshiping is even more than that. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we such a, we, we under such a better covenant now, right? And that's the beautiful thing about it. We such under a better covenant because now, you know, they would have to go to the temple and do all these washings and do all these things, right? And that was just to get a little taste of the presence. You know what I'm saying? But now... It said we can come boldly before the throne of grace. And we literally seated in heavenly places with him. So even now, the place where we worship from is just us pressing in. That's it. You think about literally pressing in his presence. How they say in his presence is the fullness of joy. So it's something, it's something special about worshiping him. And we don't have to, you don't have to wait till church to, to worship him. You, you don't. No. You don't have to. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait till the pastor come by and call. I guess what is a benediction they call it, <laughs> right? We actually in a place now. Where guess what? If you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved, right? Drawing near to Him. I be drawing near to Him with our mouth from our heart. That's a place of worship, right? Presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable one man. So it ain't, it ain't even just how the Bible talk about the sacrifice of our lips, the praise coming from us. You know what I'm saying? And that's, it's really a sacrifice when it ain't looking too well. <laughs> right? When you still can continue to praise him and, and worship and serve the Lord, but him bringing us out of darkness into the light has always been about worshiping him. Sometimes people have a problem like, well, you know, you, you get to arguing with somebody that say, well, God, why do he, why do he just seem like, you know, Prideful to have to have worship. <laughs> no, he delight. He delight, and it's almost like a. How you say he's he knock on the door? With, if, if we open the door, what he gonna do with it? He gonna come and sit with us. He gonna come and he gonna come and, and sit down with us. It's always been about a fellowship and a communion with our Creator. He said he brought them out of Egypt to have a party <laughs> in His presence, right? And it's the same way with us. And it's so much freedom in true worship. I say those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's the kind of worship that he's looking for. In spirit and in truth. Because before, you know, folks would kind of get scared. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's how I would. But now we can boldly come before the throne of grace because we know that we can come boldly because the blood has been shed and the blood has bought us and redeemed us and put us in that place but we can serve them. See, we couldn't do it on our own. <laughs> you think about it, if somebody said, hey, if you make this one wrong move, <laughs> it's over with for you. But it ain't like that. He, he literally desired for us to come into his presence. Come into his presence. And it's, it's a blessing in that, man. I thank God I ain't got to, before I could pray, got to go watch and do this and do that and do this. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's some. Yeah, talking about get bloody and all nah, this. Nah, it's so much freedom in 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 worship, in true worship, and that's what it's always been about: freedom in Him, right? Freedom in Him. Um, Colossians chapter one. We'll start at verse fifteen. Now we'll start at thirteen. We'll start at thirteen. It says He has delivered us. Talking about the Lord, right? Talking about Christ. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, Amen. visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. So it says all things were created through him and for him. Why were we created? And how were we created? Through him and what? And for him. To be with him. Amen. To be with him. It's just, it's, 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 it's a friendship that's beyond a friendship that he desires. 
The Bible said Abraham was a friend of God, right? And he told the apostles, right? He said, you're my friend if you do if you do what I tell you to do. If you, if you, if, if you love me, you obey my commandment. So it's really just a total submission, submission, submitting to him, right? Total submitting to him. Um, what keeps us from that place of worship? Offense, definitely. Offense. What keeps us from that place of worship to be able to press in? Yeah, incorrect view of God. Incorrect view of God. False identity, bitterness. All that, right? And guess what? Um, that falls all under unbelief. <laughs> all that falls under the umbrella of, of unbelief. And that's not knowing, knowing who he is. Yup, not knowing who he really is. Um, because our view of God, man, it, it just, it, it really distorted sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And um, the view of ourselves be distorted sometimes, right? Um, but we have to, we have to see things the way he sent them and call those things that be not as though they were, right? Um, I say this by faith. You know, everybody in here is an amazing father. Right? Everybody in here is an amazing dad. You might say, well, nah. <laughs> and you might feel a certain type of way. But by faith, I believe that. Yeah. Right? I believe that. Um, if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. Right? Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all things have become of God. Right? It's, 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 it's so many things in Scripture that's there for us to be free. All we have to do is, is grab hold of the word, grab hold of him, and, and really place him to that true place of worship. Right? The true place of worship. Uh, let's go to Isaiah 40 real quick. <laughs> Isaiah 40. But uh, how many of y'all love to worship? Okay, then. Put a couple of hands up. All right? <laughs> Oh, uh, Isaiah 40, we'll start at, uh, we'll start at, we'll start at verse 18. <laughs> and I think too, just knowing, I think sometimes we just forget how great he is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just how great and how awesome God is. Like literally speaking the word into existence. He said it, it was so. Right? And there's a lot of stuff, other things that he has said that is so, and if we just grab hold of it, it's so much peace in it. There's so much rest in it. You know what I'm saying? So much peace and so much rest just in what he's spoken, just in what he said. Just in what he said. And it's freedom. That's, 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 that's really freedom, right? Isaiah chapter 40, verse 18. It says, To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare to him? The workman molds an image, the goldsmith overspreads it with gold, and the silversmith casts silver chains. Whoever is too impoverished for such a contribution chooses a tree that will not rot. He seeks for himself a skillful workman to prepare a carved image that will not totter. They're talking about idols, right? It says, have you not known, have you not heard, has he not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. Now you think about this, right? This scripture was written before the internet, yeah. right? Before, uh, I can't say telescopes, I don't know how far them go back. But as far as technology, right? Technology wasn't, wasn't there like that, right? They weren't looking from outer space, right. looking at the earth. But it's amazing in this scripture it says, have you not heard, have you not, have you not known, have you not heard, has it not been told you from the beginning, have you not understood from the foundations of the earth, it is he who sits above the circle of the earth. And one time they thought the planet, the earth was flat. <laughs> but even in scripture, it's speaking about the earth being what? A circle, round. Isn't that amazing? The word of God. There's another scripture that says the four corners, and so they got confused. That's what it is? Because they thought it was square, See, that's revelation. That's revelation right there. All right, revelation. It says, uh, it is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain 
and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. Woo! Ain't that amazing? He brings the princes to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth useless. Scarcely shall they be planted. Scarcely shall they be sown. Scarcely shall their stock take root in the earth. When he also will blow on them and they will wither and the whirlwind will take them away like stubble. To whom then will you liken me? This is the Lord speaking. Or to whom shall I be equal? Says the Holy One. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody like me, y'all. Like ain't nobody like me. Right? Nobody like me. We have a hard time building building houses and cars. <laughs> but the one who created all things just spoke into existence. Right? Made something out of nothing. Verse 26. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things, who brings out their host by number. He calls them all by name, by the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. Not one is missing. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? He don't get tired. That situation you got going on, he ain't tired. <laughs> he just waiting. He's just waiting on you to give it to him. I think sometimes we think God get tired of us. <laughs> nah, he don't get tired of us. Not like that. Right? Not like that. Um, his love never fails. And that's not saying that, you know, God, you know, him being a good father, he don't get disappointed. Right? Um, but he's just waiting on us to say yes to what he's saying. That's it. He's just waiting on us to say yes. Um, and it's the mercy of God and the grace of God that we hear. It really is. Right? The mercy of God, the grace of God. Verse 29. Um, his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Excuse me. They shall walk and not faint. It just shows you just, just how awesome he is. Man. It shows you how awesome he is. Um, and we just got to understand, you know, with the Lord, everything he set up and everything he set up in place and even showing us how to do by sending our Lord, you know, being a perfect example. Like, I think it's a place even in prayer that y'all remember when Jesus went on the Mount of Transfiguration and he went up there with James and John and all these awesome things take place and he let them kind of see what was going on. You know what I'm saying? He let them be involved and kind of what was going on. And um, I think the opportunity is still there because we're under such a better a better covenant, right? Um, let's go to Hebrews 12 and we get ready to close out. Hebrews 12. We'll start at um, verse 18. Like I said, you know, just how we started off just with Pharaoh, you know, Pharaoh didn't want to let them go, right? He didn't want to let them go. Um, but God's goal, right, and his thing was for them to be free, like we said originally, and for them to be in a place of worship and to serve him and worship with him on the mountain, right? Um, what well, time came when they did come. They all got together, and they seen the thunder, and they, seen, they said, we don't want you to speak like that to us no more, Lord. We, we can't handle it. Like, we can't handle it. But I'm going to show you just how better the covenant is we have now we can boldly come before the throne of grace, right? Uh, Hebrews chapter 12 says, for you have not come to the mountain that may be touched and that burn with fire and to blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words so that those who heard it beg that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they cannot endure what was commanded. And if so much as a beast touches the mountain, it should be stoned or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. Ain't that something? But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to the God, the judge of all, to the spirit of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling 
that speaks better things than that of Abel. That's the place where we press into. Right? Um, that's the place of worship, and that's the best. That's 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 the new covenant that we can we can come to God the way we the way we come to Him, and that's by the blood. That's by the blood of the blood of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 how it takes place. Um, but just man, just throughout the day, just remember just how great and how awesome He is, and He He literally He literally do deserve our, our worship and our praise. Um, what you got? Oh, man, people speak about worship, praise a lot, and all that's good. And but what is worship really to you? Yeah. What is Paul writes about it as in loving each other. True worship is loving one another. It's not going into synagogues and churches or singing. Yeah. It's loving each other like Christ loved us. That's true worship. Yeah. So just just feel like that. I feel like that's real important to add to you know what I'm saying to let people know if you want to worship God, don't 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 leave that most important part. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Absolutely. I say, uh, you know, it's really presenting your bodies, right? Um, a living sacrifice, and it's and it's really just obeying the commandment of the Lord, like doing what He's telling us to do. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're literally giving Him everything. So yeah, you're right. Even just about singing and praising and all that, and all them cool, them good, them great things, right? Um, in spirit and in and in truth. Twenty four seven too. Right. Twenty four seven. It's it's not about church. Yeah. That's, you know, that's in our thoughts and our decisions and our plans for the future where we include God and we ask him what he wants us to do and what's best for us. And then and then resisting everything that would take us away, like saying no. Well actually just saying yes to him and you know that everything else. So, but just including him in in your life. Yeah, and that's and that's pretty much walking in the spirit, man. Like just and and I'm gonna tell you too, you know, going right back as far as you know, what I'm saying, you know, not, you know, open the door, he'll come and sup with us. Come, it's always been a place of communion and fellowship. You know what I'm saying? Like if we can walk with him and and and, and have a day throughout where we really acknowledging him, just that friendship and know that he is alive. <laughs> so even like with everything. That we spoke of him speaking the word into existence and you know the way he just set everything up. It's not it'll be crazy for us to think that we can't go a day throughout the day talking and, and having fellowship with him and communion with him. And that's what it's all about. He wanna he he wants to dwell on the inside of us and have you know have communion. And guess what? Walking in that it's not just gonna impact us, it's literally there to have an impact on us. On the whole world, everybody around us, right? Everybody around us, um, and that's what it's, it's always been. That's been the goal. That's been the mission, you know, for nations, for nations to be changed, for nations to be influenced, and and come to the true God, right? But thank God for for everything. Anybody else got anything else? For me? I'm not gonna say my brother Chris got that so I know he do. All right. Any other prayer requests too before we before we press in? My mom's finances. Okay, your mom finances? Alright, okay. Um what's your mama's name? Crystal. Crystal. Alright, it's Crystal. It's Crystal and Lisa. Alright. Alright, let's pray. Oh gracious Heavenly Father, we, we honor you on the day. We thank you that we can come to you, Lord. You're so so good, Lord. You said ask and we shall receive, Lord. And um, you said if we come and we present our supplications to you, Lord, you give us a peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord. And we, we thank you for that, Lord. Um, I know Miss Lisa's, you know, having um, the surgery on the day, Lord. And um, we just ask you, Lord, that you touch everybody in her midst. Touch everybody, Lord. Um, Lord, just we speak healing over her, Lord. Even before she steps in there, Lord, we speak healing, Lord. Um, touch in a mighty way, Lord, and um, just everybody. Let everybody be impacted about what the, about what you're gonna do, and Lord. And we just thank you, Lord. We speak healing, we speak life, we speak deliverance, Lord. And um, not even just for her, for the whole household, for the whole family, Lord. Everybody around her, Lord. 
Lord, and the man, man of God who just spoke even concerning his mother's finances, Lord, we thank you for his heart even thinking about her. Lord, thinking about his mother, Lord, we ask you that you touch her finances in a miraculous way, Lord. Um, we know that there's nothing too hard for you, Lord. Nothing is too hard for you, Lord. This is an easy thing for you, Lord. And we just ask you right now, Lord, that you touch her finances, Lord, um, and give her even more seed to sow. And we just thank you for that, Lord, for a, a, a large harvest even coming back to her, Lord. And not even just her, Lord, everybody in here, Lord. We just ask that you just continue to guide us. Uh, give us wisdom concerning finances, Lord, um, even healing, Lord. We speak healing over everybody in our families. Uh, we thank you for the angels you have encamped kept around about us, Lord. Um, continue to watch over us today. Keep us wise as far as drinking water. And we just thank you for how you built our bodies, fearfully and wonderfully made, Lord. And by your stripes, we were healed and are healed. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, hold up these chairs for me.